All right, so now we're going to take those textures that we made in SkyPaint and save them out in the correct format for CryEngine to use them. So let's go ahead and open these up. And I've also prepared a handy little template that'll help you position these in the CryEngine format. Now these end up being three 1024s. And I've labeled these to correspond with how SkyPaint saves them out. So you can see here, we have SkyPaint demo finished FR, which is front. So I'm gonna paste the front right over the front image in, in our template. And then we need to find the flipped left image, or sorry, just the left image. And of course, we'll have to flip that vertically. So we copy and paste this in here. So we can go to edit, transform, flip vertical. And we still have our snap on, so we're kind of ensuring that everything stays right on the grid and we're not going to accidentally misalign something. And if you're using this template, the names here with the underscore three, four, that's important, so make sure to, as you save your cry tiff, name it over in the same fashion. You can change the prefix, of course, but keep the underscore three, four. That means essentially it's the third and fourth sequence in the skybox. So I'm just gonna go into our actual build directory, create a new folder for this demo called sky example. drop down to crytiff and I have it set to diffuse low quality here but there actually is a sky high quality setting that you should change and make sure you have it set to 1024 you don't really want to reduce this one down to 512 so now let's find our top view this is the one that just says up so we paste that straight in we don't need to do any flipping on this one Save it as the crytiff in sky example, and we can keep the name the same. It up is always uh, underscore five. Again, check your resolution, and if you remember to change your uh, template, change it to the sky high quality, which is what I forgot to do. So on this one, we, we paste in the back view, and we find the right view and flip it, which is here, underscore RT. So hopefully it makes sense why we originally kept these as 1024 by 512 height so that they can compress nicely in these full 1024 textures. Makes it very easy. Save off our final image. So if you do everything correctly, you should have three 1024 images. They should be underscore one, two, underscore three, four, and underscore five. Now we can go into our CryEngine editor, run this as administrator, going to go file new, name it sky example, and remember this creates a whole new folder for this level. I'm just testing the sky so I'm not going to mess with the units or anything or importing terrain or anything like that. So we have our default level with a bunch of water and a generic background. So I'm gonna to go to terrain and remove the water under modify. I'm also just gonna bring up my console and take away the dis display info so you guys can see a little more clearly. R underscore display and turn that to zero. Now we bring up the material editor by pressing M and I'm gonna right click and add new material and I'll save this in the same spot that I have those sky example textures. So we go into the, the folder, and I'll just name this the same thing. Keep everything consistent so it's easy to filter. Now we have our sky material, so we need to change the shader to sky. And under diffuse, we just load up any one of the sequential textures that we saved out. So we could just load this underscore one, two. Any one of them would work. It automatically stitches them all together, similar to how sky paint does it. So our material's ready here. I'm gonna keep it active and run over to the environment tab. Now you'll see a skybox, little drop down, and we wanna click material and click the little left arrow on each of the material and material low spec. That actually applies the skybox, but you need to go to terrain time of day 
and make sure you have advanced properties toggled on the right. You'll scroll down until you see the advanced tab kind of in the mid here. You need to change skybox multiplier to 1, otherwise it won't show up. So it's actually visible right now, but there's a lot of fog overpowering it. But we do have our clouds in there with the general light settings. So let's go back in our time of day settings and tweak the lighting a little bit. I'm going to go in my depth of field and take the blur amount, blur amount down to 0 0.01 so we get a little more crisp detail from the texture. So if we take the density bottom to zero, you'll see your full texture. This would be the best way to evaluate the detail and, and, and check if the resolution is high enough. Hit Control G and fall to your depth like I always do. And you can also remember to go to terrain, time of day, and change play speed to zero. Otherwise, the, the time of day will cycle through pretty quickly and you won't get a clear view of your light settings because it'll always be animating. So I'm going to tweak density bottom to something that might be actually usable. So that's kind of nice. It's blending. We're getting some of the, our dynamic lighting mixing in with our skybox. And if we change color top, desaturate that quite a bit, then that's starting to, starting to gel a lot nicer with our texture. Again, these are, you know, you can sit here and all day and tweak these settings. It's just a, a kind of preference thing. Uh, right now I'm kind of trying to match some of the ambient light from the photo itself so it seems more natural. Okay, so that's looking decent. We'll test this out again. Now you can see our sun is still high up. So it might be cool if we actually reposition the sun to fit in with the lighting of the scene. So it actually makes sense. So in the time of day editor, I'm just dragging the actual time to get the sun elevation close to where it should line up in the skybox. And I can also tweak the skybox angle slightly so we can get it even closer right here. Now I'm going to go to Terrain Lighting, and this gives you some of the same time of day sliding, slider options. But you could also change the sun direction, which, can, which gives you a lot more control than the regular time of day. So this looks pretty close there. All of our actual light settings have changed, so I'll need to jump back in to the time of day settings and tweak those again. Under Sky, you can mess with the HDR multiplier. If everything got too dark for you uh, because of the low sun angle, you can crank that up still. So I'll drop the Sky HDR dynamic power to around 3, so it's not as overblown. And we'll also take this density bottom down. And remember, that's the, that's the key one that'll knock out some of that fog, so some of your horizon will show up. Change the color of that fog, get it blending in again with the ambient lighting. We'll drop the density down a tad more. So that feels pretty good. Looks natural with, with the colors we already have and that's usually the, the hard part. Then we need to go down to depth of field again. Since we did an, a, a new time of day, we can drop this back down. 0 0.02 should look pretty crisp. Fall to your death uh, one more time, and test it out. So this is a pretty good start. Remember, this, this version's a little lower quality because I forgot to save it as sky high quality under the Crytif, so make sure to do that. You can see some of the kind of blurring and everything, so that'll be fixed with the high quality setting. We can see the sun shining through there a little bit. And that concludes our chapter on importing our sky paint textures into CryEngine and loading up the skybox material. Now, in next chapter, I'll show you how to go back and iterate on this same texture in sky paint and add in some kind of structures in the background and kind of do some custom painting.